This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Oh, but the doctor says I'm sick and I'm gonna die. Oh, calm down, honey. You need to, you need to know who God is. And what is it that you know about the true nature of God? That he said that everything you need is provided because you know he is a loving God, that he is a healer. He didn't, he's not the one that put the sickness on you. As long as you think that God put the sickness on you, do you realize you're, 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 you're constantly saying, I don't know God. I have a misconception of who God is because I think he's responsible for this because he's trying to show me something. This is your world, so let's vow to Now, let me go a little bit more and set some more foundation here. So your impression of who God is determines how you receive from him. And where did you get your impression of who God is? From the old covenant of law, where he was uh, allowed the law to come in so judgment could come in, so he could curb sin to try to help the human race out until Jesus could come in on the scene. What's your impression of God? Where'd you get it from? What pulpit gave you the wrong impression of God? What Bible study gave you the wrong impression of God? Because these wrong impressions, guess where you get them from? You get them from church. You don't get them from the world, you get them from church. These wrong impressions of God. So let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. And I want to say again, an incorrect concept about God will determine why your life is going in the direction that it is going. So you can look at wherever you are right now, and the answer is going to be an incorrect concept about God. Whether it's sickness, whether it's lack, whatever it may be, an incorrect concept about God. Because once you get it, that's why sonship is so important. An incorrect concept, concept about God and who God is and your relationship with him, it always gives a, a clear explanation of why you are where you are. Because when you know him, and you know his love, and you know all that he wants to do and has done for you, things happen. That's why I say this is going to be a year of divine surprises, because we're going we're gonna to know our God. In fact, in that scripture, that they that know their God, He'll do great exploits for those that know him and have the right and correct conception and impression of who he is according to the, 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 the grace of God and not by the law. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained light precious faith with us, how? Through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. How many of you want grace and peace multiplied in your life? That's a powerful thing to have grace multiplied and to have peace multiplied in your life. Grace and peace multiplied unto you. How? Through the knowledge of God and through the knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, my goodness. Grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge of God. And I'm sure a lot of you think uh, that, that grace and peace is multiplied, uh, you know, you try to get grace and, and peace multiplied through prayer. And so you think, well, if we can just pray and if we can just fast enough, then that's how we're going to multiply grace and peace. No, he says grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge of God and through the knowledge of of Jesus Christ, and through, and through knowing uh, and having a knowing of the very correct nature of God, you know he's a God of love. You know he's not a God of, of judgment. You know he's a God of mercy and grace and peace. And he says, you know how you multiply it? By knowing who he is, by clearing up that wrong conception or that misconception of who, who God is. 
That's how grace and peace is multiplied. You remember when I said to you a few weeks ago, when there is a lack of knowledge, darkness will prevail. Darkness prevails because of what you don't know about God. Or, or, or because of a wrong misconception that you have about God, that you thought God was the one that did this, and God let that happen. And, 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 and if God was all-knowing and kind, he would not have let that happen. You, you, you just don't know. And that wrong conception is why a whole lot of the mess is going on in the lives of Christians who've been saved for a long time but still struggling because they don't know And so, when you use wrong knowledge, write this down. Wrong knowledge produces wrong results. <laughs> wrong knowledge of God, specifically, I'm talking about, will produce wrong results. And how many of you know faith is based on knowledge? So, wrong knowledge will also produce wrong faith. Wrong knowledge will also produce wrong faith. And then look what he says in verse 3, 2 Peter 1, verse 3, he says, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, look at this, through the knowledge of him that has called us uh, uh, to glory and to virtue. Read that again. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So everything that I'll need in, in my life, I get it through my knowing him. I get it through my knowing him, not if I say it for 25 times, not if I fast for five months, and, 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 and there's nothing wrong with confession and, and fasting, but I am saying, do you know the real true nature of God, or are you operating with a misconception? Because he says that through the knowledge of God that he's called you to glory, and he's called you to virtue, and, and everything you need in life is provided by his divine power through the knowledge of God. Boy, that's strong. So if you have a need for healing, if you have a need for prosperity, whatever it may be, you have a need of understanding who he is. What, what, what need are, are, do you have today? Here's what you need. You need to understand who he is. I don't, I don't care what the need is. By pure fact, some of those things you have in your life, some of those things that have existed and still exist, is evidence that you don't know him. That's why it's still there. That's why all this stuff happens. This is going to be one of the most radical series that I've ever mentioned, but when you know him, grace, the, the ability to get it done without you having to earn it, and peace will be there. And the first thing you're going to notice when you start getting to know the real nature of God is the peace of God to come there. But if you need healing, if there's lack in your life, all of those things let you know that you need an understanding of who God is. Oh, but the doctor says I'm sick and I'm going to die. Oh, calm down, honey. You need, to, you need to know who God is. And what is it that you know about the true nature of God? That he said that everything you need is provided because you know he is a loving God that he is a healer, he didn't, he's not the one that put the sickness on you. As long as you think that God put the sickness on you, do you realize you're, 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 you're constantly saying, I don't know God. I have a misconception of who God is because I think he's responsible for this because he's trying to show me something. And that's what we've heard. That's what religion's taught us, that God's trying to show me something. The reason why this is happening, because God's trying to show me something. You just expressed your misconception of the true nature of God. And that's the reason why that can happen to you, because you don't know that my God cannot give me what he doesn't have. Are y'all hearing me? If we knew the nature and the character of God, then unbelief, worry, and fear would not be a factor in our life. If we knew the real nature of God, the real character of God, unbelief, worry, fear would not be a factor in our life. If you knew how faithful and how loving and how caring God is, those things would not be a part 
of your life. It just, it could not, it would not be a part of your life. Amen? If you understand that, say amen. amen. Now, if then, uh, if you then uh, allow God, uh, you, you've, you've heard these, these things about the, the, the sovereignty of God. If, if you've got this issue where, you know, I believe that God is sovereign and God, God's responsible for everything. Well, that would give me a misconception of God. If you told me that God was responsible for everything, I would immediately have the wrong uh, impression about God because, you know, I look at all the wars and I look at all the disease and I look at all the things that are going on and you're telling me that God is a sovereign God and, 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 and please understand, I believe God's a sovereign God based on the true definition of sovereignty, which means he's the first one. He's the almighty God, the first one in rank. But I'm not talking about this, I'm talking about this religious interpretation of sovereignty where it says that, you know, anything that happens, it was God's will, that God's responsible for everything. Well, if you teach that, which y'all know that's been taught for years, if you teach that, that gives you the wrong impression of God. And what happens when you have the wrong impression of God? Since he's the one that caused everything, oh well. And you immediately start seeing God that way, and now you're limited in how you can receive from God because you see him as the one that's responsible for all the stuff, that you believe that God caused everything that happened in this world, and you believe that God's the one that's responsible for the wars. You believe that. And I'm telling you, that's, that's, that's a wrong impression of God. In fact, if you look in James chapter 4 and 1, it's not God that's responsible, and that's what we got to do, rightly divide the word, so you can see it's not God. That's not the true nature of God. You can't take all the bad things in the world and then based on sovereignty, the wrong uh, interpretation of it, and then say God's responsible for all the wars and God's responsible for all the stuff. In fact, James 4 and 1 says, from whence comes wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust, that war in your members? God says, I'm not the one responsible for wars. Man is. Amen. In fact, we'll, we'll, in this series, we're going to study well, well, God sent sickness. There, when God created man, there was no sickness on him. Sickness came from man. Man created all of that. Think of that, child of God trying to give him, give us the wrong impression of who God is. God made us, and he made us not to have sickness. And, and, and like I said, we're the ones that brought sickness into this world, but we always blame God for people that die, and we blame God for all the failures, and, and, and we, we, we blame God for for all the kids that are born deformed. It must have been the will of God for him to do that. And you just... Don't get it. If you believe nothing can happen without God allowing it, then he must be allowing me tonight to preach this message. <laughs> nothing happens without God allowing it. Don't get mad at me then for preaching this message because he must be allowing me to say this, what I'm saying to you. A misconception of who the Father is and the misconception of who God is. Let me go a little bit more and I'll start preaching. <laughs> people say sometimes God lets people die. And the reason why he lets you die is because you didn't study enough or you didn't pay your tithes. Therefore, you can't be blessed. That's... That's not true. Not, that's not God's nature. That's not what God does. People teach that God moves in your life in proportion to how holy you are. So if you're not holy enough, God won't move in your life. That's not true. That's not the nature of God. Some say that God sends the earthquakes and hurricanes, and he sends the tsunamis, And the number one place that blames God for all of this is the church. I don't have no problems with insurance people putting it on policies. They don't know no better. They're unbelievers, you know, the acts of God. 
But the church people say that because they don't know who God is. The church is misrepresenting the true nature of, and the character of God uh, more than unbelievers are. That's sad. But the church is misrepresenting the, the nature of God because they're teaching the nature of God from the law. And they don't understand that they're, they're in complete contrast to, to one another. The covenant of the law versus the covenant of grace, complete contrast. And the church is teaching that. Have you ever went somewhere and said, you know, God going to get you. You know, God don't like ugly. He going to get you. He going to get you by 12. God. That's not the nature of God. God is a God of mercy and grace. He's not a, I'm going to get you, God. If God would have, if God, if it was the will of God for God to get you, you'd have been God a long time ago. <laughs> Amen. God is good. I said, God is good. Let me share this one scripture and, and, and one more and I'll, I'll, I'll get started. I mean, I have gotten started, but I'm, I haven't got started what I intended on. I'm just trying to throw this stuff into your head, your thinking, get your thinking in tune with where we're going. First John um, chapter 3 and verse 1. This is powerful. First John 3, 1 and 2. He says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Wow. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. When we see him, we will be like him. When we see him, we will be like him. You know what our life as, as Christians should be? It should be about seeing God in every situation that we go through. And once you see him, you're going to be transformed. When you get in the Word, you get in the Word, you see him. When you get in the Word and you see that he's a healer, then you'll be transformed. When you get in the Word and you see he's a provider, then you'll be transformed. You know the Bible says that no, the, the no man can look upon the Lord and, and live, you know, and see the wrong impression of God will think, oh my God, God's going to kill you if you see his real nature. No, no, no. The reason why you won't be able to live, because if you, if you see him, you're going to be changed. This body won't be able to contain you no more because you're going to turn in, you're going to turn in, you're going to turn into exactly what you see. This is about seeing him. Can I see him in the midst of, 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 of the low level that I'm in right now, in the midst of the, the, the stuff that I'm in right now? Can I see him? Can I see him? Where is he? Where is he? Jesus? Can I see Jesus in the midst of lack? Can I see Jesus in the midst of sickness, in the midst of sorrow, in the midst of depression? If I can see him, then I'll be transformed. And that's what this, and that's why you have to have that personal relationship. Can I see him? And you know, a lot of Christians can't see him. They don't have no personal relationship. They have the portrayal of a Christian. They have a T-shirt that says, I am a Christian, but they can't see him. My question tonight is, when was the last time you saw him? Now, I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about in your heart. You saw him. You meditated in the Word so long until you were able to see Jesus through this situation. And the situation didn't bother you because you could see, you could see Christ. Now the transformation takes place because you can see him. It, it takes place because you can see him. You can see his grace. You can see his mercy. You can see his healing. You can see his deliverance. You can see his love. And when you can see him, you'll be transformed. Oh, my God, that set me free. That set me free. It's not how well I can perform, but it's who can I see? In the midst of this, I need to see Jesus. And how do I see him? Through his word. But if you don't get in his word, then you can't see him because you're going to be able to see him through his word. I want you to see how important this is. This is not a small thing when you got churches telling people don't get in the word anymore. You need to get in the word. You need to meditate in that word day and night. Why? So you can see him. You need to have a personal relationship with him so you can hear him. When you see him, 
you'll be transformed. Ah, oh, man, you remember that illustration of Peter walking on the water? And here's Peter walking on the water, man. And here's a natural man in the natural realm walking on the water. But what was he doing the whole time? I see Jesus. I know I don't have the ability to do this, but I'm going to see him. I'm going to keep my eyes on him. And he was transformed from a natural man to a supernatural man, doing a supernatural thing because he could see Jesus. Boy, that had, that's not preached in a lot of churches. See him. We just want to know principles of how we can get better stuff, bigger houses, and more money. And that is not about what this... I, okay, all right, let me answer that question. See Jesus. And if you're in lack, he'll transform your lack. He'll transform your lack. He'll transform your sickness. He'll transform your depression. You see him. And your search through the word is a search that says, I'm looking, I'm looking through this word until I can see him. There are people who have been healed when they were able to see him, see him. When I was going through that bout with cancer, it was that night when I took communion and I saw Jesus going into a village, healing everybody in the village, and it blew up on the inside of me. There is no way I can stay like this if he came and healed all those people who were not even born again. I saw Jesus. You know, in my heart, I saw him. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God is Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to teach on that later. The kingdom of God is within you. Well, who in you? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. The kingdom has come. Who came? Jesus. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek Jesus, and all these things will be added unto you. If you become a Christ seeker, a God seeker, and not a thing seeker, a stuff seeker, and a self seeker. This is strong stuff. We, we're hitting the... The, 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 the base of all of this stuff right now, folks. And it is all involved in a personal relationship between you and your God. No more playing church. I said no more playing church. It's a personal relationship with you and your God. Not trying to see how you can sin, but see how much he loves you and his love covers a multitude of sin. And you're not, if you save, you just ain't going to want to because he's working in you. And you're so blown away with your relationship with him. Amen. I was walking down the steps last week and I was praying and asking God a question about something I needed to say. I had a few meetings to do last weekend. And when he spoke to my heart, as clear as you talking to me. I just broke down, not in tears, I'm talking about I broke down crying because I'm, I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and he is talking to me just like a man standing right by me and, and speaking to me instantly. I didn't have to wait a week or next day or maybe he's speaking to me as in conversation mode and I just paused and thought about that. And I thought, look at my relationship with God. That's why I call this a year of divine surprises because you're going to be so focused in on building your relationship with God, things are going to be happening and you didn't even really give that no mind, but the God of love that you've encountered and made a strong relationship with is taking care of everything. He's perfecting everything that concerns you. He's doing it right now. Don't take for granted. This, this, this little Bible study you are committed to, and you come to this Bible study to hear the Word of God. And I know even as I'm talking, the Holy Spirit is doing something on the inside of you. I know this because this is the bedrock of who we are as Christians. It's when we know the true nature of God. Let me tell you something about God. He is good. Let's, let's look at some scriptures on this. You can't blame God for all the things he gets blamed for. That, that's not his nature. He can't make you sick. That's not his nature. He's not trying to teach you through sickness. He's given you the five-fold ministry gift to teach you, the, the prophet, the pastor, the evangelist, the, the, the teacher. He, he's given you five-fold ministry. He's not, he don't need sickness. Why would he use the tools of the devil to try to instruct you? It's not his nature. 
Do we really need God or can we live without him? You need the one way to understand how to know him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we come to church, but what is your personal relationship like at home? That's where the power comes from, from your personal relationship, not your understanding of the 10 principles, your personal relationship. God's true nature has not been properly represented within the body of Christ, resulting in a lack of understanding. To truly know God's nature, we must correctly interpret the scriptures. In this series, Creflo Dollar teaches us that God is our Heavenly Father, who deeply loves us and wants a personal relationship with us. Can you see Jesus in your everyday situations? For a love gift of $40 or more, you can receive this dynamic seven-message series. This offer also includes Understanding Grace t-shirt. Call now to order today. Omaha, Nebraska. Are you ready for change? For one day only, experience three life-transforming sessions with Pastors Creflo and Taffy Dollar at the Change Experience 2019. I don't know where you are, but you're not stuck. I don't know what hole you're in. I don't know what ditch you fell in, but I'm telling you, God Almighty is getting ready to deliver you out of your ditch. In fact, He has already done it. We have tolerated living beneath our privileges, and the church must catch up. This is perfect teaching. This is wholesome teaching. This is sound doctrine. This is good. This is freeing. Join us at the Hilton Omaha downtown on Friday, September 13th. Registration is free, but seats are limited. Call, text, or go online to creflodollarministries.org to register today. Grace Life Academy is a library of grace teachings the Holy Spirit has poured into me since God asked if I would be a student of grace. Now you can join me on this lifelong journey to experience God's grace in every area of our lives. Grace Life Academy is for everyone, your spouse, your kids, your friends, hey, even introduce it to your study groups. It's unlimited access to grace teachings, access to the e-courses, study guides, and online community quizzes in as little as 15 minutes a day. I'm excited as you can tell, and I don't want you to miss out on this great opportunity, so stay tuned for more from my announcement. The Grace Life Academy is an innovative approach to learning God's Word, and the best news is that it's free for 30 days. Now is the time for you to take control of your life and join Grace Life Academy. Text GLA to 51555 or go online to mygracelifeacademy.com. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.